our whole point is that you don't need alcohol to do that. You can still get groovy. You can still have a great time. Booze doesn't need to be a part of that equation. But now fast forward to today as we're recording this 2024. Like you said, there's a plethora of options on the market, including groovy, which now is globally recognized with gold medals in the non-alcohol space. The fact that they actually have a competition where they hand out hand out medals is a huge transformation from even five years yeah. ago, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny that you say that because, you know, again, starting a business within that and being one of the first within the category, you've really been able to see the perception of society of bars and restaurants really change around the category too, right? And when we started, it wasn't very positive per se. You got a lot of negative reactions. You got a lot of well, what's the point of that? Why Why would I ever, like you said, why would I ever want to drink a beer if there's no alcohol in it? As in the only reason that we are drinking it is ultimately to get drunk, is ultimately to have the effects of alcohol, right? But because alcohol has been so ingrained into society, there's these underlying reasons. We, we drink, we associate that with socializing, with making connections, with feeling happy. And so it was like, you still want to have all of those moments, but you actually might not want the effects and the negative effects of alcohol that come with that, right? And so now you fast forward and if we knock on the door of a restaurant, they understand that they need to have options, that they have consumers. And ultimately, all of this has been dictated by us, you know, the, the consumers looking for options, wanting more variety within um, our social settings. And so we've seen this category. It's now become actually the third fastest growing category in all of beverage, which is wow. crazy to see over these past years. Um, so I think it's just continuing. And even Europe has actually been a little bit more at the forefront um, in in, I guess I would say in having non-alcoholic options more readily available, like Germany has been one of the countries where because the culture of drinking beer is so innate to it, also having non-alcoholic options and non-alcoholic beer is actually makes up almost 8% of their alcoholic beer sales right now. And in, in North America, it's still at like 0.5% or so right now of alcoholic beer sales, but we're really on that trajectory upwards. I thought I read something somewhere that suggested that in 2023, a crazy stat, I don't know if it was 9% of all Heineken beer sales were of Heineken zero. Yeah, honestly, I, I honestly would not doubt that. Like, we might have to fact check that one, but it, it's it's a huge... I mean, they're spending the, a huge amount of their marketing dollars now in really getting Heineken Zero out there. And people always kind of ask us, well, how do you like position, you know, groovy in comparison to all these big guys that have all of this money and dollars to spend? And I think it's amazing. I think if you, you know, groovy as a small business doesn't yet have those marketing dollars to spend, but Heineken's putting millions in talking about their non-alcoholic options, most of the ads I see for Heineken now when I'm walking around actually talk about their zero zero versus their their alcoholic beer, right? Which is is crazy to see a huge beer company like that make that shift. Yeah, it's incredible. Why did you guys move from Toronto, Canada and set up in Denver, Colorado? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. It gets a little confusing too with our story because obviously we kind of have these two home bases for the company. But ultimately, again, when we, the Canadian market's a little bit different in the sense that you have a few big monopolized grocery chains and then your liquor board is going through, you know, it's a government liquor board. And so when we started knocking on doors trying to sell Groovy, people didn't yet see the opportunity, right? They're like, you know, we don't need to have non-alcoholic options. No one wants this. And it was really hard to make any headway in getting into those bigger grocery stores. So the U.S., you know, you have a ton more small, independent liquor stores, grocery stores that you can actually work with on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And so we wanted to say, let's get our product out there. Let's get people to try it. Let's get feedback on it. Um, and so we we're like, let's find where we want to go and get a pilot started, get some data. That's data that we can use to come back even when we do come back and enter back into Canada. And so Denver for us was really married this ideal consumer, right? So if you don't know, Denver is like craft beer mecca of the US and you have tons of breweries and really the social environment is 
sitting outside and enjoying a nice beer with friends. And you also have this healthful mindset, right? So outdoorsy, doing adventures, people caring about what they're putting into their bodies and their health and many other facets. And so we thought it, I, it matches this consumer who has an affinity for beer, that flavor, that profile, but is also health intentional. And so you know, we had actually never really been to Denver before. We just <laughs> went in and we kind of, you know, again, we're knocking on doors, getting the product out there. And um, it really ended up being a really great fit for us to kick the brand off. And, um, you know, it's our strongest market right now as well. Uh, in just a little bit, I'm going to share a code with you listeners, uh, which will give you 20% off your first order online of Groovy. And if you want to check out the website, it's getgroovy.com, G-E-T-G-R-U-V-I.com, getgroovy.com. How did you come up with Groovy as the name? <laughs> yeah, I think there's a few reasons. I always say it's like threefold as to why the name Groovy came to be. And I think the first is just when you hear Groovy, you think of something, right? You think of a feeling, you think of having fun, letting loose. And our whole point is that you can do that. You don't need alcohol to do that. You can still get groovy. You can still have a great time. You can still be silly. Booze doesn't need to be a part of that equation. I think the other piece is when we think of, you know, the groovy term and we're thinking of the counterculture of, you know, the 70s is that's what we're doing now. It's a counterculture. It's challenging societal norms and how we drink and how we think about drinking. Um, and then obviously, as you've spoken about the spelling, we kind of gave it a new feel and look versus the classic double O groovy word. And part of that, again, is thinking of the category, bringing new, fresh life into something that you know, has been there for a long time, just like giving a new twist on how we spell groovy. 